I think we just dive straight in and kick off if everyone's keen. Let's do it. Do it. Um, so the content today, it's called Story Brand, and it's it's not by content by any means. It, it's uh, the creator is a guy called Don Miller, uh, and I'll, I'll show a copy of his book in a moment. I I came across this um, actually it was shared with me by someone else who shared it in the Peak Persona community and then been diving into it more. And I just really found it really useful in terms of better framing my messaging around what I do. And now that I've seen this, I see it everywhere. Like one, one, it's one of those things where once you see it, suddenly you start seeing how everyone's getting their brand positioning wrong. Um, like they're not conveying effectively what, what it is they're doing. So I'm, I'm hoping you might have that realization. You may already have come across this content in some form before. Um, we have talked about the Gaddy pitch format before, the elevator pitch format known as Gaddy pitch. Um, this sort of has a basis in the same, but goes into much more depth. Um, just out of interest, have any of you looked at StoryBrand, this content before at all? Yeah, I have, Aaron. Yeah, cool. Seen the movie, done a bit of reading about it. Yeah. Awesome. So the approach for today that I'm going to use, I have some slides, but really it's um, video content from Don. And um, it's framed as, like you'll see as we go through it, there's actually activities for you to do. So this is very hands-on workshop activity type stuff. Um, in each break of the, like I'll pause the video, we'll do the activity and then we can talk about it a bit. Uh, but that's pretty much it. So I'm going to start showing my slides. Oh, which have now vanished, here we go. Um, cool. Uh, so this is the book, Don Miller's book, Building a Story Brand. Uh, as well as the book, he has online programs. So he has one program, which is 280 bucks, uh, which I've been told is pretty amazing. He, there's also a lot of YouTube videos. So the two videos I'm sharing today are publicly accessible on YouTube. Uh, in his programs, the videos are much longer. They, they, they go through, obviously, much more depth. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. Absolutely worth getting the book. It's available as an audio book as well. You can work through it. But I think we dive straight into the first video. Yep. So I will play this and just hope that all the audio, just maybe give me a thumbs up when I start playing. Just make sure you can hear the audio. <laughs> Now we're gonna switch gears to something else that you detail out in the book. And this is again, gonna be an exercise and we want you on Facebook to engage as well. Now Don's gonna walk you through this and then our audience is gonna go through this as well. We're gonna give you a little bit of thinking and writing time. And then again, we're gonna have some more of our live audience members go through this with Don. So Don, we're gonna take them through this idea of a one-liner. Right. What do you mean by that? And how can we all create a one-liner? Well, the one-liner is one sentence that explains what you do or what you offer in such a way that you, you, you capture the most people's attention. And so it comes from the movie industry. A one-liner is what describes a film. So when you say Jason Bourne has forgotten who he really is, but he's, you know, it makes me go, ooh, I'd like to see that, right? I'd like to see that movie. Uh, because all the suspense is in that one line. Now, a one-liner, every screenwriter knows if you create a good one-liner for your screenplay, it's worth $50,000 to half a million dollars if you can sell that screenplay. And then it goes into your phone two years later and you're looking for a movie and you read that one sentence, that could be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You gotta really nail it. What we tend to do is when, when somebody asks what we do, we say, you know, my grandfather started the company or worse, we say, well, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> what do you say when you say it's complicated? You're saying you're gonna have to do a lot of math in your head and it's probably not gonna be worth your time, but here I go. Well, they're not going to stick with you, right? We want to say something that attracts them right away, that makes them interested in what we're offering. So I'm going to take you through an exercise. It's a three-part sentence, or it could be multiple sentences, but it's a one-liner. It's something you can say really quickly. And somebody says, what do you do? I want you to say this, right? And it works like this. Uh, the first thing is we want to ask ourselves, uh, uh, most businesses struggle to talk about what they offer. We have a process that helps them clarify their message so the companies get growing again. What we want to do in our one liner, there's three parts. It's identify your customer's problem. This is the first part of your one liner. You're going to open with the problem. When I walk on stage and give a speech, 
I don't say, my name is Donald Miller, and I've been living here in Nashville a long time, and I'm married to a wonderful woman named Betsy, and we have a chocolate lab named Lucy, and we have a dog named Jim Carter, and I'm very glad to be with you today. Why? It doesn't start a story. I walk to the center of the stage, and I say, we have a serious problem. We're wasting money on marketing, and you have no idea who I am, and I don't care if you don't know who I am, because it's not about me. It's about you, right? I open up with your problem. That's what starts a story. A story is a character that has a problem. And the sooner you can get to the problem, the sooner you can get to the hook. And now they're interested. You see? And so, uh, you know, if I'm selling a product, then I want to start with that problem because it makes the product valuable. I say, you know how you sometimes drop your phone in the toilet? Well, I invented the toilet net. Okay. That's not a good example, but <laughs> I, can't. I, that's, I stole that from some comedian. <laughs> anyway, so you want to identify your problem. So what is your customer's problem? And you want to say, most people struggle with, or do you know how a lot of people feel about this? Or a lot of people are afraid to go to the dentist because they're afraid it's going to hurt really bad. So when, I, when you say, hey, what do you do for a living? You say, well, you know how a lot of people hate going to the dentist because they're afraid it's going to hurt really bad? We actually have all the modern technology. You don't feel a thing. Most people, because of the laughing gas we use, they actually love going to the dentist. They come even when they don't have a toothache. You know, right? So you want to identify your customer's problem. Second, you want to explain your plan to help them. Now, this is where you can, you can mention your product, uh, how your product differentiates in the market, but basically, you know, you want to explain, here's what we do that solves the problem. So it's the problem, and then what I do that solves the problem, and then finally, third, the successful ending to their story. Most people struggle with this, but we created this thing so they don't have to struggle anymore, and they actually enjoy life, and it looks like this for them. What is that? It's the summary of a story. But it's a summary of a story that you're inviting them into. So those are the three parts of your one liner. Now here's our one liner. Most mess, most businesses struggle to talk about what they offer. We have a process that helps them clarify their message. So their company starts growing again. That's my one liner. And I memorized this. And when the Uber driver says, what do you do? I say that. And inevitably they're handing me their business card or they go to our, their website, they buy one of my products because they, I just opened a story loop in their brain that they want to close. I walk them down a path that they now want to walk themselves. And that's the essence of a one liner. What's your customer's problem? A couple of things. You want to be specific. Don't be vague. Um, you know, a lot of people don't enjoy their lives. Okay. Well, that's, I don't know. You know, that's a little bit too vague. Also, make sure it's a pain point. They need to feel this problem. What you're looking for is for them to say, that's me. That's me. I have that, right? That's my problem. You're looking for them to identify themselves in the problem. Second, or third, get it down to a sound bite. This is short. Again, you're going to have to work on this a little bit, but it's worth the work, I promise. Make it super, super brief. Let's look at a pet store. Pet owners are concerned about what their pets are really eating. Well, it wasn't until you said that. <laughs> so I just agitated a problem. Here's a financial advisor. Most people can't get their heads around their financial future. How many of you feel that way? You're business. It's like, yeah, I actually can't get my head around my financial future. I, I don't know if I'm rich or poor. I think I'm rich, but I don't know. Yeah. Used car sales. Nobody. Hey, you know how nobody likes to haggle with a used car salesman? Can you imagine if somebody said that to you and they're a used car salesman at a cocktail party? You'd be like, I'm buying my next car from this guy. He gets it. He understands my pain. All right, next is the plan, the part two. You want to make it feel like a new idea. I've never heard that before. It's a differentiator. Well, that's interesting. I didn't know uh, you could go to a used car dealer without haggling. So it's a differentiator. Make it understandable. Make sure it's not so elusive they can't understand it and make it brief. Let's look at the pet store. Pet owners are concerned about what their pets are really eating. Here's the second part. So we source our food from trusted local vendors, right? And so now you're going, oh, I've never heard of a Pet. First, I didn't know, I don't know what my dog is eating. It's probably not healthy, but you're making sure it is, okay? Uh, financial advisor. Most people can't get their heads around their financial future, so we created a financial map that puts all your info on a weekly dashboard. That's the differentiator. That's the resolution to my problem. Lastly, used cars. 
Nobody likes to haggle with a used car salesman, so we remove the salesman entirely. You can choose and test drive a car hassle-free. By the way, people are making billions of dollars with that exact business plan. They remove the, the resistance from the actual process. And third, you describe a happy ending to their story. Make it the controlling idea of your business. That means all your employees are trying to get people to this thing. You know, you would think that StoryBrand was in the business of clarifying your message. That's just our product. That's not what we're in the business of. We're in the business of increasing your revenue. We have a whole Slack channel that's just dedicated to, I double my sales. This person wrote in, they're seeing huge increases, blah, blah, blah. And that's the motivator for our entire company. We've got to get these people money. Uh, that's the controlling idea is the resolution, the happy ending to their story is the business you're really in. Not the selling product. It's the happy ending that you're in the business in. Make it something they actually want. So they go, they don't go, uh, that sounds interesting, but I don't know if I want that. Right. So I wouldn't say, so you can have a ton of flowers at your event. That, that's not, that's not the controlling idea. So that everybody will think that you gave the best event of the year. That's the happy ending. Right. And the flowers are just the product that gets me the happy ending, but I'm actually the person who sells the happy ending. Okay, right, so let's look at them all together. Pet owners are concerned about what their pets are really eating, so we source our food from trusted local vendors, which ensures your pet stays happy and healthy. There it is. Three, three statements, one one-liner. Most people can't get their heads around their financial future, so we created a financial map that puts all your info on a weekly dashboard, giving you peace of mind about your finances. That's the result. Use car sales. Nobody likes to haggle with a car salesman, so we remove the salesman entirely. You can choose and test drive a car hassle-free, so you have a peaceful experience getting the car that you want. That's what a one-liner is. Now, what do we do with our one-liners? We have to repeat the one-liner hundreds of times before the masses will actually hear it. That means you use the exact same language over and over. I want you to do a lot with this one-liner. I want you to memorize it and be able to repeat it over and over. That means you're going to write it and you're going to put it on an index card and you'll put it in your pocket and you'll carry it with you for months. And when you're at the grocery store, you're going to pull it out and you're going to read it. It's going to be really unnatural for you to break the habit of rambling when somebody asks what you do. But it's an important habit to break. So you want to memorize, okay? And then you want to teach it to your entire team. When you teach the one-liner to your entire team, you convert everybody on your team into a sales force. Everybody. You sit next to somebody at a baseball game and say, what do you do? What do you work for? They're going to repeat the one-liner. So the way you do that is you go down to the bank and you get a giant wad of $5 bills. You put a rubber band around it. Make sure it's like a mobster roll. And you're going to walk around the office. First of all, you have a big day. We say, hey, we're all going to repeat the one-liner because people ask us what we do. And we, nobody knows how to answer. Do you guys, are you guys frustrated by that? No one knows how to answer. So we're just going to write it up here. We're going to create a sentence. We're all going to memorize it. And what I'm going to do is over the next six months, I'm going to walk around with this giant wad of $5 bills. And if I say, hey, what do we do? And you repeat this sentence, I'm going to give you a $5 bill, right? Now, what, what you just did is you gamified some discipline of actually memorizing this thing because your team's not going to want to do it. And you made it positive. And once you're done with that 500 bucks, let's say you spent, you know, $250. It's the best $250 you ever spent. Because now everybody knows, you know, and I, it took me months and I started hearing it on the phones around the office. I'm like, they're saying it, they're saying it. Right. And you just converted everybody into a sales team. It's free. You just, you just converted everybody into a sales team for free. You didn't even hire a salesperson. Open your keynotes with this statement. You want to, you know, if you're giving a keynote, you want to say, Hey, most people struggle with this. We have a product that does this makes their life look like this, all right? Let's talk about what we really want. And then you, know, you open and you close and you use it as, on as much marketing collateral as possible. Parts of your one-liner could be in your header, but it's probably too long at the top of your website. But there is a part of a website, I get into the parts of a website that need to be on your website in my book. There's a whole chapter on it. One of the parts is an explanatory paragraph. It's where you get your search engine optimization. Usually slid down pretty far on the website. The first sentence of your explanatory series of paragraphs will be your one-liner. This is how you're going to brand your company. And you're going to use the exact same language over and over because you're branding into the mind of the subconscious of your customer. Anybody here ever branded a cow? Yeah, I have a buddy, we branded his cows one time. You lay across the back of this cat, you take that brand, you punch the back of that cow. It doesn't actually feel it as bad as you thought. It just kind of goes, what are you doing? You, you do that, it smells a little like hamburger. But what if you took, what if you took a different brand, you put it over the top of that brand? And you took a different ranch's brand, you put it over the top of that brand. 
You took a different rancher's brand, you put it over top of that brand. Anybody know whose cow that is after a little while? It's exactly what your salespeople are doing to your company. We're talking about it 25 different ways. Same language, same words, over and over. It's going to be your competitive advantage in the marketplace. All right, do we want to have some time and create some one-liners? All right, part one is you want to decide a problem. What is the problem that most of your customers struggle with? What is the problem? Okay, we're going to have about a, two minutes to define this. Make it succinct. How are we feeling? <laughs> Does that all make sense? Any thoughts or reflections on that piece so far? Yeah, that's not how I'm looking at that Sorry, what was that? Just that that's not how we're doing it at the moment. We thought we had our one liner, but we're not actually telling them what their problem is. We're only telling them what our solution is. Yep. Yep. Kevin, you're uh, muted. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. We're in a startup phase, so we're, so, so we're confused trying to um, get our one liner, get it right. Mm. We're out there trialing all these different things, and I guess we'll be messing it up at the same time. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. Um, one of my businesses, we've, we've been going three years today, actually. Today's a three year anniversary, and I feel like we've only just now starting to get it right. Like, it, we've done so many iterations of it, experiments, and half of them were so terrible. Uh, so I think it is a, a learning process and it changes over time. Yeah. So Aaron, do you use metrics um, to see how um, successful your other versions have been? Like, are you like, oh, that's not getting the grab, that's not getting the take up? Or... Yeah, so, so for us, um, most of it is quite subjective and anecdotal, um, but we did look back at our like the number of signups and registrations that we get with different messaging. And a lot of the time we practice it in person. So we deliver that one sentence or, you know, that, that one sentence pitch um, and you get that feedback in real time and, and you see people resonate and then do they ask more questions so that there's that anecdotal piece. But yes, when, when we started, we've only just started experimenting with some Facebook ads and because um, everything was just organic before that. And now we're starting to put a bit more rigor behind it where we have actual data that's not subjective. But yes, it would be great if you could do that. And but, for, for our product, because we have the double-edged sword, do we have a one-liner for one, our users, and two, the businesses as well? So we have two. Yeah, so this is, a, this is a really good question. So for those of you who have two-sided marketplaces or, or two different customer segments, uh, you'll more than likely need a different pitch for each one because the problem you're solving on each side is, is very different. Um, and even your solution on each side is very different. Yeah. The other, the other challenge for this is for those of us that have, um, and I think I've mentioned this to some of you before, but anytime we have an and in what we do, it's like, oh, but we do this and this and this and this and this, and we do it for this customer and this customer. And the challenge with that, for any startup, you really have to focus. You've got to choose one thing and do it for one person in one market and nail that first. Um, so that's a whole different conversation when you go down. But for this exercise, I'd pick, I would pick one thing to focus on, like one customer archetype, one customer persona, um, and one service or product, and really focus it that way. Ideally, your business is pretty focused, but if you're struggling, like try and just pick one focus. Yeah. So this is just one piece of the story brand content. This, this what he calls a one-liner. So this can end up three sentences. Um, in the next bit, we'll go through some where he looks at websites. And then in the next bit after that, we'll go through his full seven step process to the storytelling piece. But for now, what would be good as an exercise, um, just like he introduced is let's, let's focus on our one sentence or, or, you know, that first part of the sentence on the problem. What's the problem we're solving? And for those of you who might think, well, I don't really solve a problem. I'm like this nice to have, or I'm like this vitamin or, you know, whatever it is. The way he talks about it in some of his other videos and content is that everyone that's coming to you is they're still looking for a problem to be solved. So even if they want a pool for their house, that's the problem they want solved is that problem of getting a reliable builder to build this nice, amazing pool. That's going to entertain all their friends and keep their kids happy and blah, blah, blah. 
So really think about the problem that you're solving. So I'll just spend a couple of minutes on this. Maybe um, let's go through in six minutes. That'll take us through to 10 o'clock. If anyone finishes earlier, just do a wave. And if we're all done, we'll, we'll kick off. But it's five to six minutes just on the problem. Get it really clear and concise. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be just the first section, but if you want to move on, I'm sure I won't. Yeah, if you finish the problem, feel free to move on to the um the, the plan bit. Yeah, no one's gonna get in trouble today, Aaron. What was that? No one will get in trouble for moving moving on to the next task. No one will ever get in trouble for moving ahead and actually executing. <laughs> Does anyone need more time for the problem piece? No? Would anyone like to share their, their problem statement or their 
first part. Yeah, I'll start. Yeah. Um, so our problem is most people find it hard to search something to do when they travel or are in their own hometown. Okay. Yep. And, and is the trouble search or is the trouble find things to do? Yeah. Find, yeah. Anyone else want to share theirs? I'll share mine. Yep. Um, we know that workplaces want to improve workforce engagement and safety. Do they, do they want to include that or do they just want people to be safe? Okay. Improve, not include. Right. Improve. Sorry, I heard include. Okay. Yeah, so, so one thing with the problem is going, and this is something he, I don't know if it's in this, this particular video, but he has this piece where he talks about what people want isn't your product or service. They want the life that happens after your product or service has been successfully implemented. So if you flip the problem back from that, um, so often what they want is a feeling or, or an outcome. And so if you flip that back, that can also help us get clarity on that, that problem piece. Anyone else want to share this? Uh, yeah, Aaron, I'll have a go at, at the whole gamut. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Yep. Okay. Let's give it a shot. Business owners' biggest headaches often come from managing their people. We measure and positively impact human performance indicators so that your people manage themselves. Yep, that's cool. I like that. So yep. I, I've got mine, but my last sentence I keep changing, so I'll just do my first sentence, which is people die without their family knowing their story. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's punchy though. It, like it makes you react, doesn't it? Yeah. It makes you want to, you want to listen to what's, yeah. what's going to follow. Yeah. <laughs> because I, the whole, the whole time, my entire, I really skirted around saying that, but screw it. It's in the first sentence. That's what happens. Right. Yep. Um, we're going to say our, our problem is um, Australians spend more than $60 billion every year on workplace injuries. Right. So who, who are you who are you selling to? So that was for our employer customer base. So we actually have three customer bases. Right. Um, so yeah, we have um, some challenges, you know, making sure that we're talking to the right people at yeah. the right time. So we have to really tailor our message depending on if we're talking to the employer or talking to the health provider or talking to the worker. Yep. Because so my, my my initial gut reaction to that. If yeah. I'm a if I'm a business owner, it's like, well, that's great. That's an economic problem. Yeah. How is that my problem? Whereas if yeah, you're pitching that to government, I would get, oh yeah, okay, for government, yeah, yeah that that's a good yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can see, um, I, I I struggle with this and defining these, and um, it's definitely a practice, and you do need to go and test it with your customers and see what resonates. Um, one task I'd encourage you to do after this is to actually ask your key clients to give you the, the pitch back. So explain to give them the quick 30 second pitch of um, the Gaddy pitch or of this story brand one liner and ask them to give it back to you what the pitch is. And it's a really fascinating process. Um, okay, how about we now spend five minutes on the next pieces of the, the pitch. So round out your full sentence. I know some of you have already done it, Trish and others, but just spend the next five minutes, round out your full sentence. So we have to identify the problem. We then have to go into the plan of execution and then talk about that life after.
This way, this way back is a separate one. Yes, so that How did everyone go? Did we finish up? Would anyone like to share their whole pitch? Their one sentence? I'll share mine. Yep. I rewrote it slightly from before. So workplaces need to continually improve safety. We reimagine training and development experiences to position your workforce as the problem solvers. Yep. So my reaction to the um, workplace need to increase safety is still like, why? Like, what, what's the deeper problem? Like, why, why do I need to do that? Like, it, I know it's obvious, but it's also not obvious. Yeah, people die. People are dying. In workplace accidents. <laughs> 
Are we going to all end up with a pitch like people are dying? <laughs> In our pitch on Friday, we literally said we're, we're killing, killing people. people. Yeah, you did. You did say that. Yeah. <laughs> we're killing people. The industry is killing yeah, 400 yeah. something people. Yeah. That that that's compelling. Like workplaces are killing people, and okay. in this day and age, it doesn't need to happen. We have this process for blah blah blah. <laughs> I, I can see Kevin doing a pitch where it's like people are dying without having full life experiences. Dying <laughs> from boredom. Dying <laughs> boredom. What's this split space is all about? I like the death and to get in and do what you can before it happens. <laughs> Jen is solving the problem of people dying. Everyone is. Yep. Wow. Yep. Look at this slide. Pick the sauna. <laughs> We're all dying. Would anyone like to share one that's not about death? No. <laughs> yeah, Kevin? Oh, okay. People find it hard to find something to do in their own town or when traveling. We have built a website app where all businesses in Australia can list their events so you can find them in seconds. A local parents group loves the concept last school holidays when they travel to the Gold Coast. They use the app find heaps of school ho holiday activities to do with the kids. I, I love the I love the start. The middle the middle was quite specific. So whether you need the app and mobile or you just need we provide a service or I'm not sure. Um, the ending was probably very like a very specific example. So um, so this is my reaction just hearing it was because I'm already in Brisbane like Gold Coast is so close, like well, I'm, I, all my brain's firing. Well, like, well, what else? Like, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, but but that, I, I love the start. I thought that was really awesome. Okay, so yeah. make it instead of focusing on one type, make it more broad. I, I think so because you don't know the person you're pitching to. What I'm going to do in a second, the the rest of this video, um, Don actually goes through some examples from the audience, and you'll hear his feedback of how he reacts to them, and you'll see in there some of the things he talks about in there. You'll probably be able to relate back to your own stuff as well. Um, but would anyone else like to share theirs before we, we do that bit? Um, I just, again, I'm still struggling on that last sentence of mine. And if you're okay, I'll just do the two, can I do the two different ones? Is that okay? Yeah. So, yeah. people die without their family knowing their story. We help you turn your story into an interactive private memoir. So your future generations have a deeper understanding of their own family history or Oh, I help you tell your story in an interactive memoir so your future generations don't have the pain of not knowing their own family history. So. Yeah, I, I don't know what everyone else thinks. I can't, the, the first one resonated probably more for me. Yeah. So, well, you're yeah. painting a positive that, picture yeah, that's of the deep, outcome that you want rather than the outcome you don't want. Yeah, cool, cool, good, good. good. <laughs> Salt. Do you want, awesome. um, but do you want people to use this product before they know they're dying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, as in you don't want to limit to your market to people who just have a terminal illness and feel like they need to get this off their chest before they pass. No, actually, to, to be honest, um, people in palliative care, it's too late. Yeah. Uh, it's actually too late. Yeah. Uh, it might even be something like, um, you know, along the lines, like, um, you know, you want to tell your side of the story without facing someone or without dealing with the fallout or I don't know something of it you know like if you think about why people would want to do it privately without actually having to face the person to tell them oh no 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 that's uh, and actually that's a big issue so we're not it's not a private memoir we actually get the family involved in making the book what we're saying is we don't publish these books in bookstores right okay then, for the whole public to read these are to hand down through your private um, through your family generations in your own family collections and I've used the word family collections before so uh, through private family collections to your future generations it just so means why don't, you, why don't you tap into like you know the art of storytelling you know storytelling has been part of human nature since prehistoric times you know whether from when they were doing paintings on walls or whether people were, you know, writing, you know, chapters in the Bible or, you know, indigenous populations handing stories down to the next generations. Like, 
you know, tap into that storytelling as being part of human nature. Yeah, I've used that in a, in a, in a pitch before, actually. I did from um, hieroglyphs back to uh, hieroglyphs because emojis are yeah. hieroglyphs. So, <laughs> so yeah, I think you're right. I mean, for us, it's just trying to, yeah, okay, I'll go back to I'll go back to Yeah, because that, that first one to me, I mean, I don't know anything about what you do, and that first one about the dying just made me think, oh, this is just for people who have a terminal illness. Mm. Okay. See, there's your pitch coming back to you. Yeah, no, you're right. No, it's, <laughs> good. it's brilliant. It's great. Yeah. And it's, yeah, and, and just on that vein of conversation too, um, one thing that's hard is trying to do something that encompasses everyone and, and the need is to focus on where you'll get the biggest traction. So who is your ideal customer persona? That doesn't exclude others. Others will hear it and still do their own dot, dot, dot connection of how that fits for them but to have that focus because otherwise we end up losing that impact when we try and make it all things for everyone. Nice. But yeah, I think that process you just did too, I think doing more of those types of conversations with others and get them to pitch it back will be really powerful. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share, we're going to, um, sorry, I'm going to share my screen and start this video just with a few examples of how he dissects some of the participants pitches. We want to get through as many, we've only got 10 minutes. We want to get through as many as we can. Will you tell me your name? Nicole. Nicole, welcome. Give me a one-liner. Many parents are concerned about their child's ability to communicate. We provide an individualized speech therapy approach to give your child a voice that lasts, lasts forever. That's humble. That's really wonderful. Really wonderful. <laughs> Woo! Okay, here, here, here's one thing I'll say, Nicole. Part one and part two were fantastic. Part three was good, but not fantastic. And here's why. You said a voice that will last forever. That's a beautiful piece of poetry, but it's very hard for me to figure out what the benefit is to me. So you would say, so they can communicate clearly and move ahead in life without any, with, with ease. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So it's, I, I love the, the beauty of the poetry. That's nice. But if you say what I really want is for my child to be able to communicate clearly and move through life with ease and, and succeed. Right. So that I want that more than find their voice. Or so that's a little bit poetic. But other than that, I think it's fantastic. Excellent. First, first go. Thank you. Okay. Next. I'm Robin from Best from the Nest and many product based businesses are really frustrated with selling their products on Amazon. We show them how to tame the Amazon marketplace so they can be more profitable and grow faster. Okay, I love I love everything. I love part two and I love part three. You just did a little repetition on part one. Many products based businesses. As soon as you said products based businesses, my mind spun out. Okay, because I was wondering what's a product based business and what's the difference between that and a normal business and but it's but then when you said uh, many people sell stuff on Amazon, but they don't know how to do it really well, they're losing a lot of money. You, then I was like, oh, got it. So just take away the part where I got lost in the first. You had, you just take away almost the first few words okay. and go straight to the many people try to sell their products on Amazon. And that's it. Everything else is fantastic. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Yep. Next. Yeah. He, yeah. Great. And I'm Brian. Um, ours is. Most people think heart failure in pets can't be treated. We fight to keep families together with expert care. Most people think what? Pets with heart failure can't be treated. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And then we do what? We fight to keep families together with expert care. Okay. I'm not sure how pet heart failure. I'm a, vet, I'm a veterinary cardiologist. Gotcha. But, but the, the result, I wouldn't think if you're, you're, most people think pets heart failure can't be treated. So I'm looking for a result for the pet. So you connecting my, my pet's heart problem with my family splitting up, I think is too big of a gap, too big, a too, too big of a bridge. So let's go. Uh, most people don't think a pet's heart failure can be treated. It's actually quite simple with a, a few process and a pet can live just, your pet can live just as long as any other pet of their type or breed. Cool. That make sense? Yes. So just be a little bit more specific with it. I think you went to a feeling result and I would normally recommend that, but the feeling result really was more, um, of therapy, family counseling, then veterinary and cardiology. Okay, got it? Yep, thank okay, you. Okay, great. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Rachel Carroll. Hi, Rachel. Uh, hi. Um, okay, mine is, um, people are tired of taking pills, so we offer medical massage therapies for the relief of chronic pain. We help people have less pain, more movement, and a better life. Done. I wish I could critique you, but I can't. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, wonderful. Yes. Hi, I'm Frank. Many doctors fear going into private practice because they don't know enough about business. We guide doctors through the process of setting up a successful medical practice. That way, they can have the medical practice they've always dreamed of. I, I love it. I, I love parts one and part two. They can be a little more succinct in terms of words. Part three, let's give me a little more than just what I've dreamed of. Let's be so they can be successful as doctors and as business people or something like that, right? Because so, right. dreamed of is just a little bit elusive. Other than that, I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> So you can see just yeah some of his thoughts there. In in some of his other content, he talks about um, brain calories. So every time you have words or images or whatever else, he talks about using you're forcing the person looking at it to consume brain calories. And in the next video, I'm going to share. Basically, we start looking at websites, and he he sort of dissects how he reacts to these websites. Um, now this this topic here, this this story brand one sentence one liner. That is something that you probably want to schedule some time to actually go away and do properly. So this is just to introduce you to the concept. We're not going to nail it today. What I'd encourage you to do is schedule time where you actually go away as a team and actually come up. So whatever your team is, whatever that looks like, um, go away and actually come up with this for your business. Have conversations and practice pitch it to others. Um, I'm part of the QT entrepreneurship team and we did this at the start of the year. We actually started by getting everyone to stand up and pitch their own version of what they thought it is we do. And we ended up with 12 different, it was like we were working for different companies. Like it was so bizarre. And then we, we spent a couple of hours bringing that back to the one pitch, which we all agreed on. Um, but within three months, we, we were all out pitching different things again. So I like what he said about once you nail that one sentence, make it the back of your business card, make it your bio on your social media accounts, put it on the first page of every pitch deck that you do, like that becomes your one sentence. When you meet someone at a cocktail party, bang, that's your one sentence. When you're in the taxi, bang, that's your one sentence. So, and everyone on the staff should have that same hymn book response. So they're the action items. I'd say number one, schedule some time to get away. Number two, come up with your one sentence. Number three, embed it. So it's in your DNA. Does that all make sense? Yeah, and Aaron, we've got our Christmas party on the 4th of December. Yes. So we could, you know, have everybody be able to just get in this succinct because there's going to be lots of people there. And, you know, we can, um, that can right, you and Sharon and, and can be walking around listening. Up. Yeah, they said the same thing. <laughs> and the person they hear say it most maybe wins a prize or something. Yes, I like that. The best, yes, the best one line I buy by the Christmas party. I like yeah. it. That's a good time frame. <laughs> people are dying. It'll be a room full of people are dying because we're killing them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people, people will be wondering what's going on. Um, I'm just going to tee up the next video. So, any questions on the one liner before we move on? No, cool. So in this next video, uh, it's it's more looking at websites. So so taking this same approach and looking at websites, and I'll, I'll let the video speak for itself. Um, I'll just tee it up. Yes, hello Facebook, and welcome to a live look in at Entree Leadership Master Series coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. Thrilled it. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to skip ahead to a bit um, where it actually starts looking at websites because otherwise the video is quite long. So these are actual websites of people in the audience that he goes through. This, but this is actually going to be a lot of fun and it's going to be very helpful. So if you're in our audience and you volunteered your site, uh, get ready to come on up here. And uh, first, we're going to start off with Victoria Clausen. And Don, uh, her website is victoriaclausen.com. You can see it there on the screen. And Great. she is a florist. So everybody give Victoria a hand. Hi, Victoria. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Uh, okay, well, so I've never seen any of these websites. They asked me, do you want to study them? And I said, no, because I want you to be able to experience me looking at them from an outside perspective. One of the reasons I do that is because we struggle with the curse of knowledge. Curse of knowledge is a phrase created by Lee Lefebvre. He wrote a wonderful book called The Art of Explanation. And Lee Lefebvre says, 
knowledge works on a scale of one to 10, or if knowledge worked on a scale of one to 10, you understand flowers and, and whatever you do, which I'm about to find out, at a level 10. I mean, you, have a, you're, you know what you're doing. You have a PhD in flower G. So, and I don't, right? I just need some flowers. So what we, we, we intuitively know we've got to simplify this message because people aren't as smart as we are in our field of expertise. What we do is then we, we take level 10 and we scale it down to about level six because we've simplified our message because we want to reach more people. That's a great effort. The problem is people buy between levels one and two. So from two through six is the curse of knowledge. We're talking over their heads. We're not speaking to their actual needs. And what we're gonna see, I haven't looked at any of these websites, I guarantee you we're gonna see the curse of knowledge happening. But it's hard for you to see because you're so smart. You have, to, you have to get a dumb guy to look at your website. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so this is the first time I've seen it. Okay, there's a couple things I noticed right away. One is the top right corner of your website is your dominant real estate. So right here, we need a buy now or order flowers or whatever you do. So we need that right there. Instead, we have connect. I don't know what connect means, right? And I, I didn't come here to connect. I came here to buy flowers. So when you say connect, I say dating service. Now, if, if it, it, it takes me calories, my brain is going to fill in categories lightning fast. You can't stop it. You cannot stop your customers' brains from thinking. They see connect, they go dating service. Now you have to deconstruct the fact that you're not a dating service, right, in order to construct the fact that you're doing something else. Now, probably most people wouldn't go dating service, but I see connect, I think dating service. What I really want to see is buy flowers or order flowers or something like that. Okay, now I see this. The first thing you probably see is Victoria Clausen, and, and no offense, I'm sure you're a wonderful person, but I don't know who Victoria Clausen is, but there she is. And then floral events. So floral events are events that are put on for flowers. So it's where flowers get together and have events together and talk about what sort of petals are you gonna wear to that wedding? I was thinking about wearing red. I noticed you're wearing red. It's March, is it okay? Are we the wrong flowers for this month? Okay, obviously I'm being very facetious because I would, <laughs> I would imagine though that you bring flowers to weddings, to banks, is that what you do? We design events. You design all of the events. Mm -hmm. You would do more business if you said we design events. Honestly, you would see an increase in business if you that. said we design beautiful events, right? That's it. That's what you sell. You sell a beautiful event. Now, that's physically what you sell, but I'm actually not looking for just a beautiful event. I'm looking for a beautiful event that impresses my friends, right? We design beautiful events. Uh, all of your friends won't believe it or your friends won't believe the beauty or whatever. So flowers are part of it or not part of it? They are part of the- Big part of it. A big part of it. So, but it's floral events, but it's not like for the rose parade or anything like that. You can see why I'm confused. Okay, so we have a mantra story brand. If you confuse, you'll lose. So what you want to do is you say, here's what we do. We design beautiful events. What's in it for me? Um, you know, everybody will be impressed or, or it'll be the event, that, the event of the season. What you're, what you're offering me, if you say the event for the season, by the way, is an identity. And something that I want that's even more powerful than a beautiful event is I want to be a kind of person who is known for having a beautiful event. I'm wanting my friends to see me, uh, to see me, uh, we call it selling, an, in the book, it's called selling an aspirational identity. And it's really important for you. These events are expensive, right? So we worked with a wedding coordinator who starts at $1 million. That's her fee. So she only does like 10 a year, poor, poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> Scale up is difficult. <laughs> uh, and, and so what she's really selling is an identity that this thing is gonna be flawless, beautiful, there's not gonna be a problem, but every one of your friends from Senator so-and-so to Kid Rock is gonna to come to this thing. I'm kidding by Kid Rock, I don't know if he's ever been on. But, but they're gonna to come to this thing and they're gonna think this person is that does amazing things. So we wanna get that in here. So probably when we scroll down after we say, um, you know, something about we, we, we host or we help you host a beautiful event, then here's the other thing that immediately somebody's gonna say, if you say, we help you host a beautiful event, or we help you do tour, they're gonna say, oh, well, you don't do, uh, you don't do, you know, food service, whatever. And so you actually wanna overcome that right away. Everything from food service to this. So that means we need to send out some customer surveys. 
And we need to find out what, what is the resistance, right? It, do you do everything for the event? No. You don't do the food? Anything you don't... visual, anything pretty. Okay, so we will help you make a beautiful event. Anything that will make your event beautiful from chairs, tablecloths, to napkins, to flowers, to whatever. You want to list all of that stuff because I'm giving you split seconds to fill in categories of the problem that you help me solve. And within five seconds, I need to know all I've got to do is call her and everything visual is going to be taken. Literally, I'm going to take a shot. I'm going to call the caterer. I'm going to call the entertainment and I just have to take a shower after that. Right? Yeah. Okay. So what did I just say? You'd scroll down and you'd say, we will make your event beautiful. We deal with everything visual at your event. All you have to do is call the caterer and maybe some entertainment and take a shower. We'll handle the rest. You see, now you just did the math for me on what my part is in this really easy thing. And you've offered me a beautiful aspirational identity that everybody's going to come and think Don Miller puts on beautiful events. So we want to get that kind of copy in there. Here's the great news. You've done so much right. One, it's a gorgeous website. Nothing visually, I don't think, needs to change. It's fantastic. You've made so few mistakes that people make. There's not a ton of text on here. Nobody reads paragraphs on websites anymore. They scan websites. They don't read them. This is a scannable website. You have who we are and who we are not. That I didn't read that yet, but that's actually confusing. So I would actually say schedule a consultation or you know give us a call. I would probably get rid of those things. Um, the other thing that I would add to this website, and it may already have it, you, you can tell me, I would add a lead generator. So I'm looking around, there are six people that I'm trying to choose between to make my event beautiful. But you've got a lead generator, five things that go wrong in expensive events, or five ways people waste their money. You're probably not a, that, you're probably a little more higher end than that. But you see what I'm saying? Something that, I, that I'm, you know, I'm gonna give you my email address. I give you my email address. You, you give me this four-page magazine article style document that's beautiful. It says the five mistakes people make when they're hosting an event. You've officially, if I read that document, you've become my guide. I've just spent an hour with you, and I spent four seconds with your competitor bouncing off their website. Who's going to get my business? You are. And then you're going to send me over the next two weeks even more help through an email. Then what happens? You're in my phone. And I'm getting an email. I'm not even reading it. I'm swiping it and I'm deleting it. But I'm not unsubscribing because that PDF was so valuable. But what are you doing? You're reminding me that you exist. And now it comes time because Betsy's saying, Don, make the choice. The event is coming. And who am I going to call? You. Because you branded yourself in my mind, offered to resolve my internal problem, offered me an aspirational identity, and done it with crystal clear language. So I would get a lead generating PDF. I would capture email addresses. I would send them five or six emails. You should see, I would think business double just from that. The great thing is this is the website itself is a 15 minute fix. It's just text. You just need to change some text. I would remove connect. I would say uh, schedule our service or something like that. I would make it a different color on the top, right? I would add a lead generating PDF and I would think you would do really well. Thank you. So good. Thank All you, right, Tori. Appreciate you. it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Yeah, how about that? All right, up next, let's hear from Andy Crum. Uh, they are a building and home supplier. Uh, the website, Don, is wombelcompany.com. Oh, this is Andy and Ainsley. Good to see you all. Give them a hand. They Where are you here. Yeah, Oklahoma very City. Nice. Oklahoma City, beautiful town. That town's an amazing town. That town is really up and coming. I know. Yeah, doing a lot. Okay, uh, we are wa the Wombo Company. Just one thing, that doesn't solve my problem. So I, so I don't know what the Wombo Company does, right? Um, you know, so at this point, I'm having to fill in gaps in my brain. I'm not, now my brain is moving ahead of you. You didn't fill it in, I'm going to fill it in with wrong answers. You got to fill it in with the right answers. I just don't know what a Wombo is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then people are guessing. Yeah, what's a Wombo? Okay, nobody's read these paragraphs. Uh, I'm not going to read them because we don't have time. This is like war and peace these days. Okay. <laughs> Tulsa, Oklahoma, why should I call you? Uh, I want a lamp. Okay, you're a real estate company. No. no. Okay, so did you see how I'm filling it in? You're a window company? <laughs> yeah, we tell windows. Oh, my gosh. Best windows anywhere. Just get rid of this. Best windows anywhere. Best windows anywhere. Wawa company. Pictures of some windows. You'll see business go up, right? Because now I know you're a window company. What differentiates your windows from other windows? 
well, they're high quality and the we install paint service we do all of it we're the full turnkey great but best windows anywhere we install paint service which saves me from what down the road from you know energy efficiency you know rotting windows we take care of it all for you yeah okay so i want you to agitate a paint there's going to be a, a little bit paragraph not this much maybe half of one of these things that says we'll never leave you out in the cold we won't sell you windows without servicing back them up. We'll actually physically show up in your house and make sure they're working great. You'll never worry about your windows again. Okay, something like that. You know, it differentiates because you're actually going to come out doing from from installation to painting the whole deal. I don't. Maybe that's other window companies, but I wouldn't know that. So as soon as you said that, I would think you're the only window company that does that, right? So you want to say a lot more. Um, let's actually, as Oklahoma's only turnkey Pella provider, I don't know what a turnkey Pella provider is. We've been supplying builders, contractors, architects, and homeowners with the highest quality construction products available. Again, construction products is timber, beams, uh, ins foam insulation, mm -hmm. right? It's windows. Right. So you're not you're not owning the window territory because you're not telling me you do the best windows. You want to be known as I'm telling you, you know, if you're a cocktail price, is any way you do, you say, you know, most people have serious problems with the windows. They hate opening and closing them. They, they leak, that cold air is coming through. We sell the best windows in the industry. We install them, we paint them, we service them. We make sure nobody will ever worry about their windows again. We are the window people, right? Now, now who are you in their brain? Yeah, the the window people. People. yeah when they think windows. <laughs> oh, yeah. A problem is a cue, a cue that makes them think of something. I have a problem, my problem is windows, that's a cue, and you have not put yourself in their brain as the solution to the problem because you are selling to contractors, architects, home builders, the highest quality construction products available. Nobody ever got to the second sentence and there's nothing about this image that says you sell windows. There's nothing on here at all that tells me you solve my window problems. How are we going? Does that all make sense? Yep. yep. Is anyone reflecting on their own website at the moment? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could do with, I mean, the it just had a new sort of rebrand and everything, which is great, all the colours and stuff, but there's a few, a few too many words in places. Yeah. No call to action, really, no great big button that says, you know, bring us into your business today or anything like that. The lead generation is really big. I've, been, I've honestly been procrastinating about it. Just I know it's got to be there and I haven't done it. So mm -hmm. I think it's a like, I just really got to get it done. I yeah. I, I've scheduled in for one of the future workshops for us to talk about sales funnels. And I, I think that's where we can talk about that, that yeah. onboarding process. Sales funnels freak me out. It just seems like such a lot more work. I've tried to yeah, <laughs> for another workshop, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I'm just going to play one more example um, because this one, I've just jumped forward, but this one I think highlights where we get things wrong a lot when we're doing things. And this is an example of websites, but I see this equally in marketing materials, you know, at printed adverts, just the way we message things. So I'll just play this one more. A recycling company. Hey, Mark. And uh, the website is metrogroup.com. Okay, I can. Uh, are you going to be affected by this uh, trade tariff thing in China? Shipping uh, scrap? Away? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, you be know careful about that. about that. Yeah, I know about. It. Okay, this is uh, this is a building that's for sale. You sell that building? I <laughs> know. You lease the space in the building? We own the building. Okay, you lease any space though? I uh, know. Okay, because that's what you're selling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who's your customer? What would what would if I have a what would I send you if I have a junkyard and I'm pulling out scrap metal and send it to you and all that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, we buy from that. Mostly it's industrial customers that generate scrap metal in some aspect of their business. Great, repeat customers. Repeat customers. Okay, sales reps going out and talking to them all Absolutely. the time. What differentiates you from your competitor? Uh, mostly that we're local. We're not corporate. Um, you're the local guys, yeah. Which means they get more more time with you. They get more hands-on service. Yes. They get more. You can pivot quickly. You yep. take care of things. Are you competitive in the marketplace? Yes. Okay, so we want to bullet point all that stuff and brand it in their brains and why they don't. They, they need to go with you and nobody else. Is it is is can you take uh, uh you know I want to be really careful, but can you take business from your competitor in your yes. area? Mm -hmm. Is there there are people who so there's plenty of opportunity to grow. 
there is. I mean, there's a certain size of the pie that you can steal from them. Okay. So one thing that you want to do is you want to say, how many of the recycling services transloading containers? Uh, we have to spend a little bit of time figuring out your business, but I do want above the header. I want I want to know what you do. Uh, we do industrial recycling, and then I want to know the biggest problem that people have in recycling that they're tired of. What is the problem that your customers are tired of? They're just um, sick of it. They're a lot of them are worried about getting ripped off. So they they're not sure because uh, I would imagine if I'm sending you. 2,000 tons of steel or whatever. I don't know the market well enough to know what's a good price and what's not a good price. That's correct. Okay. So if you can figure out a solution to that, transparency in prices, uh, you know, you want to do that too. I don't say you want to offer the best prices or something like that because you might not be able to, but something that takes away that fear. And so we want to say uh, industrial recycling, uh, always transparent about prices, getting you the best money. You want to be the CarMax of industrial recycling. And here, the big fear at CarMax, here's what CarMax sells. Everybody thinks they sell cars. They don't sell cars. They sell the fact that you don't have to deal with a used car dealer. And that's why they're an $8.75 billion company. Because they've taken the resistance out of the market. When people walk onto a car lot, they don't want to deal with a used car dealer. So when I'm dealing with recycling, one, it's really intimidating. I feel out of control. I don't know what these prices should be. And you're going to take that away. You're going to say, you, you might even be really transparent about your markets. You know, we're getting into a little bit of business strategy, but I would say enormous opportunity here. And then what you really want to do is you want to send your sales rep out probably to talk to them, right? Yes. And I stopped that one there, but um, Kevin, that one made me think of you. It's like, you yeah. know, are you in the business of events or are you in the, the business of helping people find amazing experiences? So it, it's that little flip of what what is the actual problem we are solving and then how do you put that on the website in a way that as soon as someone sees it that they understand exactly what you do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um any reflections on that one before we sort of move on was that useful listening to those yeah. yep so i'll share um after this i'll share all the links to these videos and a couple of others as well so you'll be able to watch the full video not just the bits that i've sort of highlighted um but what i want to share next just in the little bit of time left that we have is to actually share the full seven step um brand st story or story brand process so again i'll share a video that steps through this but really what you want to do is tell the story of your business in this way, which is the character. Um, they, they actually frame it as the hero. This is your customer. So your customer is the hero of your story, not you. And, and this story brand content talks about this a lot because most, most companies try and make themselves the hero. They're, the, they're trying to make themselves the one that, that, that everything they write about is themselves. We've been in business 30 years. We are this, we are amazing because, whereas the person at that point doesn't care that, you're taking, the, you're taking the hero role and instead you want to make them the hero. So understanding who your customer is and who your hero is, understanding what their problem is, is the next step. So step two, what is their problem? Then step three, they need to meet a guide. And this is the story, like this is the, um, I, I guess the structure of any story, any Hollywood movie, they all have this same thing, right? There's, there's a hero that has a problem that meets a guide because the, the hero can't do it on their own. The hero is stuck. In fact, the hero is often afraid. So they need a guide and you're the guide. So your role isn't to be the hero. Your role is to be the guide that helps the hero. You challenge them to go on the path. You get them on the path. So you're the guide that understands exactly how they feel. You can demonstrate empathy. You demonstrate credibility. And then you give them a plan. So here's the plan for you to go and achieve what you're trying to achieve. That plan then needs a call to action. So uh, step five is the call to action. And it's be a really clear, simple call to action, which is what he was talking about on the website with like a, a buy now button or a book a consultation button. What is the really clear call to action? Then you need to paint the picture of what the result is. And, and by the result, we mean both the path of success. So if they buy off you, they get this great outcome, but you also need to be able to paint the picture of if they don't buy off you, what's their life gonna keep looking like or what's gonna happen in their future. So in the world of the death and doom in the work sites, it's like people will die. Like if you don't fix this in your work site, people will die. Um, if you don't capture the, this legacy story of, of your 
um, aging relatives, then those stories will die. You'll lose that knowledge that's been gained. You'll lose your family history and legacy. And then what does that mean? So there, that's the seven step process. And what I was gonna leave you with, um, which I'll drop in the Slack, is that's broken down into um, this worksheet basically, where you can define who your client is, the problem that they're having, your role as the guide, um, give them the plan, the call to action, and then describing what success looks like. So it's a very simple process. Um, the bits I wanna share for me with the work I do is that flip of the, the customer is the hero because we felt such a need with our marketing to sort of promote who we are and what we do and our experience. And while that's important, it, it positions us then as a place of hero where they're, particularly because we're working with founders, the founder wants to be the hero of their story. And even if you're selling into a company that the company, the, the person that you're actually selling to wants to be the hero of that story. It's just, they need help to get there. So this is why telling your story and your brand and your marketing is less about you. And it's all about them. Um, the other tip on this as well is in terms of your marketing, what the story brand content talks about is to just be talking about problems, the, the customer's problems. So all of your content should be speaking about, and if you get up and give a keynote, talk about the challenges, the problems, this is the things that are happening, because then anyone who is in that character role, your, your customer will hear that and go, oh my God, that's me. How, and then you start portraying the path forward of why you're the guide. So that credibility piece and the plan of action. But does that make sense? Does that model make sense? Yep. So that's, a, that's basically the essence of story brand is are those seven elements. I'm looking at that and, and seeing a lot of similarities with parenting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you can, you know, yes. you can follow that through. When that's watching. actually true now. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh -huh. mm. I do that every day. How's this going to end? <laughs> Did we you guys at my house this morning? <laughs> we'll leave I, I think you're right. And and the mistakes, you know, sometimes we make as parents is making ourselves try and be the hero of that story as opposed to no, we're just the guide. We've got to let the hero fall down. They're going to get hurt, but that's okay. We're here to guide them and we'll pick them back up. I, I think that's a really good analogy, actually. I actually say to my kids, like, if I especially need them to, like, um, be the best them in the morning, like, if I've got, you know, like, something to come to, I'll say, dude, I need you on my team today. Like, I really <laughs> yeah. need you on my team so I can, like, do this thing. Well, that helps you. And then that, they're good. Yeah. But if I'm just, like, shoes, shoes, I said... Like, how many times do I need to say the word shoes? Um, and the, I just get blank faces. So, yeah. Um, yeah. my team only works if I don't use it all the time, though. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it every day. No, nah, can't be every day. It can only be when I actually really need it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's amazing, though. Hey, the flip, like, I need you on the team. Yeah. So, um, it was a bit hard to hear you at the end there, but how does everyone feel like in terms of just reflecting on the, the marketing you've been putting out previously and now hearing this content, like just this quick exposure to it, how are we feeling about what we were putting out before? Yeah, a little bit confusing, making people use their brain calories. Yep. Yeah. Anyone else share a similar reflection? Yeah. Actually, just listening to that, I, that's even changed my, you know, little pitch thing that we were doing just before, like a more clarify, clarity in, even in that. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's funny. I, I see this all the time. Like uh, I passed a, um, a, a tradie van the other day and it, it had some random name, which wasn't indicative of what they do. And underneath it, it just said, we make the world brighter. And I'm like, that could be the tagline for a thousand different things like that tells me nothing about what you do um it turns out once i got alongside they're a globologist like they do light globes but it's i just think we you know we 
I see it all the time. Once you see this, then you start looking at businesses, you start going to their websites and it's all about them. It's all like, this is me, 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 me. And there's no compelling, well, hang on. You've forgotten to actually sell me why I should care. Like, what, how are you solving my problem? I've come here for a problem. How, do you, how are you solving it? So that was a big light bulb flick for me, uh, change for me. This template I'll share with everyone after this workshop. Um, and I, like I said, I'll drop the other links. Is there anything else you guys want to go through with this content? Though I'm keeping it pretty short because there's a lot of work that you could do separately. Um, but any questions about the content in general? No. So if we, if we um, search for that video online as well? Yeah, so you def definitely can. If you search for story brand, you'll find heaps of results. Um, there's also other people who are certified story brand practitioners who've made their own content. Um, but I will drop in Slack all the like three or four most relevant ones that I think are the best. Cool. And I'll drop this worksheet as well because it's sort of a handy process to go through. Um, the other thing he touched on there, which we'll, we'll do in another masterclass when we get to the sales funnel stuff, but, but definitely that thought piece around what is a, a little simple PDF guide or what, what's your free offer that you could give to people that they have to sign up for and then starts this domino effect of you then having an email campaign that goes to them. Um, anything you can do to build that connection beyond them just landing on your website. So we'll, we'll talk about that more. I, th I think we'll schedule that for the next month, but I think for this one, focus on your one liner, schedule some time to talk to some of your clients, particularly clients that you haven't got yet, like clients you haven't won yet and, and get their feedback. Um, embed that one liner everywhere, do this seven step process, review your website and your collateral to make sure it's, you know, telling the, the story, like not using brain calories. And if we do all that by the Christmas party, <laughs> which is like four weeks, that's, that's doable. Well, at least that little, you know, one liner, right? Mm. That yeah. first bit. Yeah. So people, if they say, oh, and what do you do? Then you've got something to say. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How are we feeling? Good. Good. No one's totally demoralized that they're just, no, that's good. <laughs> Keen to go and have a look at the website and yeah. see if we can fix it. Yep. Awesome. Well, um, we um, might. Uh, you know how that free to offer thing? Yep. Could that even just be um, like a company brochure so your website's not as wordy, but it's like, you know, Da, 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 this is our, our whatever you put in your depending on what you sell. Could that be the thing that you exchange for your email to kind of use less brain calories there? But it's also that they could download if they need to take that to their boss so they can sort of show that justification process or that, um, you know, that you've got the content behind what they want to follow it up. Yeah. So, so the like, what makes good downloads or PDFs or eBooks are things like any, anything that delivers actual value to them, like helps them start to solve their problem, while also positioning you with authority, credibility, and empathy. So, you know, things like checklists, the top seven things to avoid when, um, the top five regrets of um, someone who's lost a relative or something like in terms of the legacy book or whatever. It, whatever they might be, I'm not sure, but um, usually it's some sort of guide that, that demonstrates your value. So yes, it could, it could be almost anything. The other part you made me think about there is, you know how he's going through the websites. Um, what he talks about in terms of website format is you wanna reduce as many words off the page as possible. So even your header menu bar, like his view is just have one or two or three things in the top and anything else like about us or all those other pages about, you know, our other clients or whatever, put them in a menu bar at the bottom of the page. So you're not taking them off your site, but you're putting them, you're not using calories right up front. You're not distracting. You're making it really clear. And then for those that do want to find out more, you can drill down. Um, I can also share a link. He, he's got, there's a video where he talks about actually how to set up the entire flow of your website. 
Mm. So that seven step process that they have of the hero, the problem, the guide, basically they flip that into a model for your website. So you start problem and then you scroll down, you get to the next bit, next bit, next bit. And it's what they found. It's a way of optimizing sales to have that flow. Um, so I'll share, you've just reminded me, I'll share that as well. Cool. Well, it's coming up to 11 o'clock. So um, we might call it there. I'm happy to stay on a little bit if anyone has any questions, but otherwise in the next sort of 15 minutes, I'll drop all those links in the Slack channel. And what I'd encourage you to do is to share with each other. Like as you refine your pitches, drop them in the Slack to each other and, and get feedback. And if you find more content, share that with each other too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Please. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Right. Thank you. Oh, the last thing as well, I still have some slots free this afternoon if everyone, any of you want to have a chat. So book book them in too. I've got you in for Awesome. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. See you, everyone. Bye. 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 And Jenny, feel free to any of your team in these sessions whenever you like that's totally okay. great you share that link uh, great thank you great oh excellent thanks bye, bye. bye.